session of this uh, virtual India Bangladesh stakeholders meet, uh, which is a special session on potential cross border surface route trade. I uh, I would like to welcome Dr. Uh, Dr. Rajan Suresh Ratna, Deputy Head, Sub Regional of, of South and Southwest Asia UNESCO. Uh, I'd like to welcome Madam R. Lal Rodingi. Advise, advisor BIT, Notice in Council, Minister of Donor, Government of India. Uh, we will uh, we are also joined by the Assistant Commissioner of Bangladesh uh, in Guwahati, Dr. Shah Mohammad Tanvir Mansoor. Uh, we will be joined by Sri Abdul Matlub Ahmed Saab, President of India Bangladesh Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And we are thankful we are also joined to we welcome Sri Armal Haq, Acting President, Dhaka Chamber of Commerce. I think Mr. Matlub Ahmed sir has also joined. Uh, welcome, Matlub, Matlub, yeah, Matlub sir. Can I you just want us? to know. I just want to know whether you can see me. Sir, currently we are not visible, and uh, uh, so up, if switch. I think okay. Now you are visible. Now you are visible, sir. And can you hear me? Can I, you hear me? We can hear you, but yeah, but you have to turn your camera, but no matter what, I'll do that. Is it okay yes. now? So we are going to start the session. Uh, no, no, sir, it's the other way. Uh, it's the other way. You are, you are, you are, you are like, you are towards. Yes. yes, now it's fine. Now it's coming towards fine. Yes, yes, yes. This is the proper one. Yes, correct, correct. Okay. Now. So, welcome. So we are today here to to start the session on potential cross-border surface route trade, where there will be the discussion on the potentialities of Indo-Bangladesh uh, cross-border trade through the surface route. So to start with, like uh, uh, I would like to request uh, Abdul Matlub Ahmed Saab, sir, if you could kindly uh, lead the session, and uh, I'll be in between, sir. If you could uh, lead the session and. Uh, uh, start the welcoming of the dignitaries, sir. Uh, you want me to do it? Yes, sir. Just, just the initiation, then we will take it over from there. Of course. Well, uh, uh, this session is on the uh, cross-border trade India and Bangladesh. As we all know, Bangladesh uh, is three and a half side, except a little portion of and uh, we have been trying for uh, increasing the regional trade activities, uh, regional investment activities. Today, uh, we know that uh, there have been a lot of in uh, business, especially the surface trade. So, uh, what we want to do is uh, in this session try to see whether find solutions to the current problem. And these problems may be route, water route, and uh, would be other infrastructural deficiencies. So all we need to do, let some of the priority ones. In the uh, meeting with the Honorable Minister and uh, with meeting with our Prime Minister's advisor, we could perhaps uh, give some straight uh, suggestions to both the governments at one go. Uh, we cannot achieve anything at one session, but once we can highlight it, this can be quoted. Uh, special task force that I will be requesting ICC and ICCI to make one with the delegations from all the stakeholders. And we are going to meet not only Indo-Bangla government officials, but also try to meet Nepal and Bhutan to carry forward whatever of these uh, seminars. So, uh, with this point, I would request ICC to uh, please uh, ask uh, the panelists to speak up one after another. And uh, uh, I will come in uh, the way you want it. Hello. Yeah, sir. Hello, yes, sir. So uh, when your uh, will the panelists will uh, deliver their the statements, sir, their, their remarks and their uh, verses, 
and from then sir in between whenever if you feel like we'll have a conclusive uh, this one remarks on the entire proceedings which is there so if you could kindly uh, give a view on the, the conclusion of the this one sir. Yeah. so now sir we would like to find, sir. i will not only do the end remarks but i'll also try to give remarks after each panelist so that uh, some from icc can write it down yes, and sir. that's the yes Yes, sir. We are, we are in the, yes, sir. Fine, sir. Fine. L let's start. Okay, sir. Fine. So now we start with uh, Dr. Rajan Sudesh Ratna, Deputy Head, sub regional Office for South and Southeast West Asia, uh, UNESCO. Uh, Dr. Rajan Sudesh Ratna, sir. Thank you, uh, and very good afternoon uh, to ICC and uh, other organizers uh, and the chair. Good afternoon, everybody, as well as uh, the participants. Uh, this uh, uh, India and Bangladesh, when we talk about trade, it has, uh, I don't know how long I can go. At one point of time, we were all part of one single country. Now we are different country. Still, uh, despite having a, a land border and as chair said, the water border, so riverine system also we can trade, uh, but the cross border connectivity is still lacking. A um, uh, few kilometers across the border, if you need to take things, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of money, and it increases the trade cost. Uh, as was pointed out by the chair, uh, India and Bangladesh are also member of SAFTA. They are also participating in BIMSTEC. Um, they are also member of Asia Pacific Trade Agreement, which is APTA. And despite exchanging tariff preferences on many goods, the trade or the real potential of trade between India and Bangladesh is has not reached. Uh, it, still, there are a lot of a uh, gap between the real trade and the potential trade and a majority there are certain estimates which talk about the majority of trade also happens through the informal route now if the informal route uh, as per one of the estimates uh, is that it is six times more than the formal route then definitely in the formal trade there are many many challenges or the bottlenecks which are not there in the informal trade. And so uh, let me share some of the statistics because uh, the chair said uh, he would uh, uh, like uh, these proceedings to go to the minister and the honorable prime minister to be highlighted. So let me uh, share with you World Bank estimates, which is ease of doing business index, uh, which was done in, uh, in 2021. Uh, if you look from the Bangladesh side, uh, if they want to export, the time for export at the border compliance at Bangladesh, it takes seven days. Whereas if it is India, the border compliance documentation or a time, it takes three days. Uh, if it is the cost to export uh, in terms of the money, those seven days translate into $408 for the exporter of the Bangladesh just to comply with the border requirement for crossing uh, a, a, a kilometer. Uh, in Indian side, it's half, but it's still very, very high of $212. Yeah. Similarly, if you look for imports, it's more uh, lengthy. In Bangladesh, instead of seven days of export time, it takes nine days. And the cost of import compliance at the border is $900 again, $408. When the countries are trying to become part of a supply chain, sourcing raw material becomes very, very important. And if the raw materials or the inputs are not coming cheaper, your finished product will never be globally competitive. So uh, these uh, are the impediments and the challenges. And as uh, Chair pointed out, there are many challenges which are either infrastructure or even in terms of soft uh, uh, infrastructure, I would say, not uh, a, a high infrastructure. Now, let me give another statistics, and which is uh, the trade cost. SCAP uh, and World Bank have uh, a trade cost database, uh, 
which has an ad valorum equivalent to look into the tie. So when we talk about India and Bangladesh, we talk about FTA, we talk about APTA, we talk about Bimstek FTA, and there's a lot of excitement that the goods are happening in FTA, perhaps at zero degree, uh, zero duty, or maybe zero to five percent, which is there in 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 SAFTA. But look at the ad valorum equivalent of a trade cost between India and Bangladesh, it cost $122 equivalent, under 22%. So when you are trading between India and Bangladesh, the trade cost, other than the, I mean, the tariff, becomes 122%. With that, how do you expect the trade to be competitive and to have it? And, and that is where the, the infrastructure becomes important. We talk about non-tariff measures, but more than non-tariff measures, the uh, the road, uh, the checking at the border, the time which it takes for a lorry or a truck to cross is huge. And that all adds to the cost of trading. Uh, one thing which SCAP is uh, promoting, and fortunately, luckily, I must congratulate Bangladesh that they recently exceeded to SCAP's framework agreement on a paperless trade. Now, paperless trade is such a trade facilitating measure. Um, Bangladesh and India, both of them are member of WTO. They are signatory of WTO trade facilitation agreement. They have taken commitments in the WTO. But in addition to that, much of the bottleneck at the border can be reduced if the documents are transmitted in a paperless mode so that before a truck or before rail or before you are crossing through the riverine system, the importing country's custom has all the documents, has checked the document, and so the consignment passes just like that. That, if happens, would really uh, make things happen and that will draw parallel to informal trade because informal trade which is happening is totally paperless but not legal and therefore unless uh, both the countries take efforts of moving from a process burdened uh, regime to a trust based it process based automated process based system uh, the trade cost will not reduce and i will leave it here thank you very much thank you dr rajan ratna sir thank you very much for your insights uh, the uh, sir would you like to uh, provide any remarks I, I, to quite happy. Uh, the picture, both soft and uh, the actual infrastructure, has also been highlighted here. And uh, therefore, therefore, I feel that uh, we take this into uh, into consideration that uh, high transmission cost increases the raw material cost, and whatever advantage we have. Uh, by buying is lost through the high cost of transportation. And this is what uh, in the morning session we found the Silet guy importing from Dubai, stone chips, where we cannot import Fran, which is just across Meghalaya uh, uh, and Assam. So that's what we are trying to say. And I feel that these are the things that we need to point out when we give the recommendation to the highest body. Uh, thank you. May we have the next. Uh, Presenter, please. Thank you, uh, Ratna Sab. Uh, now I would like to call on Madam R. Lalrodingi, Advisor BIT, Northeastern Council, the Minister of the Donor, Government of India. Madam, would you kindly deliver your address? Good evening, everyone. I think it is echoing, no? Start, madam, please start. Let's see. No, like it's echoing, I think so. Can you hear? Maybe everyone yes, can hear you. unmute. 
Mr. La Madam, uh, yes. we can hear you. We can hear you. What okay. you should do is uh, be in video for some time and then close up the video. Because all of us have uh, this Webex has a problem. Okay. So, is it okay now? Webex, we have to. Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. You can please okay, okay. say. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. I would not be doing any new development to share with the uh, attendant, I mean the participants, but uh, I just want to highlight my thinking that we have been talking about, uh, uh, you know, this Indo-Bangladesh cross-border trade issue for quite some time, but then nothing seems to be happening. And since we are working in our North Strong Council, and three states, Mizoram, Mikalaya, and Tripura, are fully, you know, depending on uh, this trade route to grow economically. But then on the ground, nothing much uh, is there, according to me. Particularly the Mizoram one that Tlabung uh, uh, ICP is also becoming very silent this day. So I just need to request whoever is in authority that to speed up whatever clearance is required and whatever promotion, whatever development is to be done. Because the, out of the eight states of uh, Northeastern Council, like uh, look up states, and there are three states which is uh, very much needing this border route and uh, proper and uh, meaningful trade subject so that, uh, you know, that this region would also be a blessing for Bangladesh side. And at the same time, this uh, Northeastern region would also grow along with the Bangladesh. So I would not be telling anything in specific, but after sitting here, about three years, I have not seen much progress. I urge and request the authority to speed up for the betterment of the Northeast and uh, so that we can also become more close with our closest neighbor, which is Bangladesh. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Lal Rundingi, uh, advisor, madam, uh, you have highlighted uh, the slow development between many of the states of North East. Um, when I was Federation President, I went to Mizoram and many of the other places of North East. Uh, when we visit uh, these states, uh, the amount of interest is quite high. But the problem is, uh, it is organizations like ICC, which has to follow up the, what we uh, what we develop here. So I totally agree with you um, as a suggestion that whatever comes out of this conference must be followed up um, every quarter so that we can come back to you with the results. Thank you. ICC, next speaker, please. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Nalundi, Madam. Uh, and uh, yes, we will surely be following it up, Matlub Saab, as you suggested. And uh, now we come to our next speaker, our own Assistant General uh, High Commissioner of Bangladesh in Guwahati, Dr. Shah Muhammad Tanvir Mansoor. Uh, I would like, sir, to kindly uh, deliver your address about the potential cross border surface route trade. Uh, I just like to say that prior, post your this one, we have got a film from the Bangladesh Assistant High Commissioner's Office when they have started a portal. So I think if, uh, after you your delivery, we can play that uh, uh, video of the portal also. So I'd like we'd like to request you to kindly initiate your delivery. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pranam. Uh, you are working very hard for the lab. Uh, I have seen that how much. Given. And thank you for inviting me for the August online. Uh, uh, first of all, I uh, beg my apology, seek my apology that I am uh, right now attending another function, and uh, that's for uh, I am in a very rush moment. So please follow. 
argue for that i finish my speech very quickly and another uh, the program which is going here in party about bangladesh film festival and seventh march speech day of Bang other nation bangladesh committee He took power 13 years before, and at the time of per capita income was not more than 800 or 900 years old. But within these 13 years, such a charisma that uh, now our per capita income 2,600 US dollar. Great achievement of Bangladesh. Anyway, today's topic is uh, cross border, potential cross border trade, uh, um, uh, potential cross border trade by surface route. So on this issue, I will directly. Uh, uh, issues which should be solved at the earliest. Dear audience, first of all, you see that uh, the trade which is taking place to Northeast India has some its own characteristics, not similar like other uh, LCS, less concentrations, which are situated through West Bengal. Here we see that all the traditional items are traded, like coal, limestone, stone cheese, vegetables. Only these things are traded, and for a long time, it is only the same case. So we have to come out of this stereotype. I don't, uh, I'm not saying that it should be cancelled, it should not be stopped. I'm not telling like that. But what I am to propose that apart from trading on coal, limestone, stone cheese, boulders, sands, vegetables, we should explore other items also. And we have to ask our uh, young entrepreneurs to involve in new trades. And I questioned myself and I had made a uh, brief research on that. Why other items are not being traded? The first thing is that the people feel little harassment in the LCSs situated through this Northeast India. There are 26 LCSs through Northeast India with Bangladesh. And uh, unfortunately, all, man, a maximum of them are not modernized. Maximum not, uh, are, are not uh, lagging infrastructural facilities. And therefore, the young entrepreneurs are not having interest to involve in this uh, surface route trade to these land custom stations. The most important uh, land custom stations are, for example, uh, Dauki Tamabil, Shaila Shutar Gandhi, or Dalu. If you visit practically these land custom stations, you'll find that there is a long queue of trucks. It is fun. So it is really horrible when you see that infrastructure is not there. And again, when really, then the young entrepreneurs, the innovative entrepreneurs, do not they, they don't find interest to involve in uh, the surface source. So this has to be modernized. Now I would like to mention that what are the uh, problems actually. Number one is transportation hazard. Road infrastructures need to be developed as soon as possible for smooth trade. Then customs immigration port weighing process should be digitized. I mean, the weight machine, this to be digitized and uh, it should be modernized and it should uh, involve less amount of time. Truck drivers, the uh, managers, the entrepreneurs, they feel a lot of hazard when carrying on their trades. Travel tax payment is also a uh, harassment for them. Facility and the LCSs I have seen situated through Northeast India. It is surprising for me that uh, in the Air Force, we see that so many uh, modernized, good looking money exchange uh, shop, but in this LCSS, there is no money exchange machine. So, another opportunity for involving informal trade, illegal. <clears throat> then uh, there is a complaint from both the side that LC payment are not good time. So, this has to be solved. It will uh, actually spoil the commitment between the two sides, India and Bangladesh. So, Banks should ensure that LC payments are made properly in on time. Then uh, uh, that tax stamp should be there. Parking facility should be there. There should be some logistical area, warehousing area. Tracks should be uh, kept in a very uh, disciplined way. There should be some queue. And truck drivers, their helpers should be given much of my facilities so that their owners uh, will be happy and they will be involved in more trade. Then there is no laboratory facilities. I mean, it happens very frequently that maybe you are uh, importing cloth from Bangladesh and you are asked to go for laboratory tests to in a further states of India, like 
maybe you are asked to go for the test in Patna in uh, Mumbai. So this is sometimes, and I'm not, I'm not telling the particular this state, but it, they are sent to other states. So in Assam, Meghalaya, there should be laboratory facility. Storage facility is not there. So that is, if it is there, not much. No washroom facility. Most importantly, Wi-Fi facility is not there. And therefore, modern system of irrigation couldn't be installed. Some places are there, like Shalar Shurtakande, they have installed. Some are there, some, in some places it installs, in some are not. But in these days of modern uh, technology, we should be able to install this IT, tech, IT facilities in all the LCSs. So uh, these are the common the LCS I have found. And uh, they are solved from my side. Uh, anything to be asked, let to give you an um, email. My email can be set by ICC so that uh, you can question. Please uh, forgive me, I need to leave because I'm in another. Thank you so much. Honorable Assistant High Commissioner has spoken. Hello. So one thing uh, I'd, like to, uh, I'd like to thank Abdul Matul sir also. Uh, I have a uh, uh, announcement. Sir, can I take one minute time? Hello? Hello? Do you hear me? Yeah, sir, we can hear you. Sir, somebody's uh, actually... Somebody's, uh, okay. There is an announcement uh, and uh, there's a very uh, pleasantful thing to de declare. That is... Uh, in association with ICC, Indian Chamber of Commerce, we have launched a trade portal. It has both version, both the version. It has a website version and also it has uh, apps version. You can download IBT, India Bangla Trade. You, you'll find it in uh, Play Store also. And also if you search by Google India Bangladesh Trade Portal, then you'll find it in the Google also. So by using this site, both the parties, both the side can find their potential exporter and importer. Indian exporter can find their partner in Bangladesh. Bangladesh exporter can also find their partner in India. And they can put order, they can negotiate, they can explore as many as export and importer by this website. To all the potential exporter and importers and trainers, but it will be uh, used for the business fraternity. And I must thank uh, Abdul Matul Ahmed, sir. Uh, uh, President of uh, India Bangladesh Chamber of Commerce and also today's Chairman Rodingi, Advisor of BIK NSC, and also Dr. Rajat Ratno, UNESCO. It's a really wonderful opportunity to get his company in the online seminar, Mr. Arman Hawk. So, thank you so much. Thanks to all. Sir, we are going to uh, play the uh, Indo Bangladesh portal video. Now, uh, we would like to tell the delegates and the dignitaries regarding this portal. We are showing a small film, very short film, okay. regarding the portal, which sir, has described, which is an important portal for India and Bangladesh. Deva Brother, would you kindly play the video? Indian Chamber of Commerce, in association with the Bangladesh Assistant High Commission, Gahati, presents the first ever Indo-Bangla trade portal. Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Tanvir, Bangladesh Assistant High Commissioner in Guwahati. Recently, Bangladesh Assistant High Commission has designed the first ever India Bangladesh trade website along with its apps version. In the website, the details of all the major exporter importers of Bangladesh and India, particularly from the northeast part, are made available along with the product information, its price and specification. Therefore, it is expected the new and young entrepreneurs can easily, smoothly and conveniently can find out their potential partners in the bilateral trade. And accordingly, they can also make negotiation to each other by using this website and apps. It is expected this website and apps will help to create healthy market competition in the border trade between Bangladesh and India. And also, uh, it is expected that by using this website, the uh, trade will become more formal and convenient for the traders. So my kind request to all of you to spread the link of this website and apps to all of your friends in the business fraternity. Thank you so much.
Well, thank, uh, you. thank you. Dr. Tanvir, uh, we are proud of you. You have been done a good job. And we were speaking about this in the morning session. And of course, this will also be mentioned uh, during our session with the Honorable Minister. Um, as you all know, uh, Sir, we I have raised the thing. right topics. Sir. Yes. Sir, please visit Guwahati. Please have a branch, uh, I, I have a India Banner Chamber of Commerce branch in Guwahati. Please, this is my honest request. And uh, uh, I know that you'll be able to do that. So we are a very able leader in the business community. Please visit Guwahati and uh, have some that Thank you so much, sir. Yes, we have uh, in our diary uh, to a, a visit to Assam and especially Guwahati. So, inshallah, uh, we'll be there. Uh, on your presentation, you have highlighted uh, several items which are all useful for most of the uh, areas, but a lot of development has happened. Like we have laboratory in Benapol now. So, uh, these things may have to be also given to the other land ports. So that's what you are looking for. A lot of the parking facilities have developed. Uh, uh, LC payment, uh, there were some issues uh, for uh, some some of the uh, LCs, but majority there is no payment uh, problems for Bangladeshi LCs to India. Um, but anyway, uh, if there are any specific issues, please pass it on to us. We can talk to the bank headquarters and try to solve it. But thank you very much. Sir, we would sir, like sir, you sir, to. One thing. Sir, one thing. Uh, sir, actually, yes. uh, this is this statement is not my personal statement. When I visited all the LCS, I met the traders. They have raised these complaints, and I have just confirmed it to you. It is not my personal thing at all, not on behalf of Assistant High Commission even. It is direct communication with them, and I found this from their side only. So that's why I have to raise this. No, we have a complete trust uh, on your findings. All I'm trying to say that uh, we would like to work on these, and there are certain um, areas that we can take up and solve immediately. So um, I would prefer that you mail email your your points to me sometime later on. Actually, I'm in Bangkok, so here yeah, there's some net issues, but uh, I liked uh, the way that you have approached the, the problems. There are a lot of things that we can do from here. So that's all for me. I need the next speaker if there's any. Thank you, Dr. Tanvir. Thank you, sir. Now we have with us uh, Mr. Arman Haq, Acting President, Dhaka Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Bangladesh. Arman Haktar, we are very pleased that you are here. Kindly deliver your address. Thank you very much. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, loud and clear. Thank you. Uh, honorable session coordinators and distinguished panelists from home and abroad and different chambers and associations. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to you. Uh, I'd like to begin by thanking the Indian Chamber of Commerce for inviting the Dhaka Chamber of Commerce and Industry to the Indian Bangladesh stakeholders meet. We sincerely acknowledge and embrace the importance of India and Bangladesh economic relations as India is the second largest trading partner of Bangladesh. Uh, today, I would like to particularly speak about the further opportunities to trade through the surface route where there are some challenges as well. I would like to go ahead and address some observations right off the back. Um, due to the strategic position of Bangladesh between Asia and the Asia Pacific, DCCI is very aligned with policy advocacy related to Bangladesh, India, China, and Myanmar, the BCIM economic corridor. And also the Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Nepal, the BBIN motor vehicle agreement from the private sector standpoint and other economic blocks. With bilateral trade volume at 6.9 billion, India is the largest one of trading partner of Bangladesh, one of the largest. Um, the BBIN is a populous, but the least network region in the world. As a result, the economic potentials at the regional level remains unrealized. There are some factors that hinder the efficient movement of vehicle across borders 
some which has been mentioned earlier by the earlier panelists. Uh, major hurdles to implement BBI and MVA is lack of awareness of the main stakeholders on its positive impact. Without going into the details, which we have all have heard, um, I want to keep in mind that the various social, economic, and trade aspects in the sub region, this event needs to be highlighted on the following issues. How the implementation of BBIN MVA can be helped for multimodal connectivity and trade facilitation in this region, intergovernmental agencies and development partners' roles in cross border infrastructure BBIN MVA. I would also like to highlight that this motor vehicle agreement connectivity will also facilitate easy access to the other ASEAN markets. Um, this inclusive surface road connectivity can help export diversification and GDP growth of Bangladesh and India, as well as the bilateral trade to 16.4 billion, as estimated by the World Bank. With regards to surface transport, uh, of course, we have the road, rail, and river routes to India. Uh, these are all important. Um, the Bangladesh government is actually relentlessly working on cross border trade, expediting inter regional routes. India and Bangladesh signed a SOP for the Chittagong and Mongla ports used for the movement of goods. Uh, previously, four routes were identified for the transshipment of goods using vehicles and vessels of Bangladesh in this protocol. For example, the Chittagong port, Mongla port to Agartala via Akara, the Chittagong Mongla to Dauki via Tamabil, Ch Chittagong to Mongla to Saturkandi via Shiola, and Chittagong to Mongla to Bibek Bazar via Shimantapur. So, this we felt with protocol was a very progressive step in cross border trade facilitation. And just like that, some of the non tariff barriers, land customs, Port border infrastructure, including ICT facilitation uh, in Assam, Tripura, and Meghalaya, like cargo building, warehouses, and transport infrastructure, really thoroughly need to be fixed. Through our land ports with West Bengal, we are, are it's relatively good, but Shiola, Ramgar, and spe uh, Temango specifically, and other river port infrastructures adjacent to the northeastern st states need drastic improvement. So um, I just want to talk a little bit about, uh, shed some light on the wa water transport. The proposed 900 kilometer waterway would be used to transform uh, port freight from the Eastern states to the Northeast, starting from Haldia and West Bengal. It would, it would substantially improve connectivity between the mainland states and the Northeast. The proposed waterway could reduce transportation costs by 70%. And proposed Agatala and Akara via Guwahati extended rail route can save 1,000 kilometers rail distance and 23 hours travel time from India to northeastern states. And uh, just to conclude, I'd like to say, as India is very much invested with Bangladesh, the 8 billion line of credit that has been promised by India may be considered to be used for local infrastructure projects to ease connectivity. Uh, as you all know right now, Bangladesh is on a very positive trajectory of infrastructure development, and India is already a part of that journey. So now we should also consider the macro development of the surface connectivity side. Uh, I don't want to prolong uh, too much. I would like to thank you all once again uh, and thank the Indian Chamber of Commerce for today's timely stakeholder meet. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Arman Sab. You have uh, Dhaka Chamber is one of the Best chamber, and uh, we all are members for Dhaka Chamber, and uh, they normally have good relationships with most of the country chambers, and of course with the Indian chambers. And uh, as rightly pointed out, the road and the rail links and the water links between the countries need improvement, not only in the infrastructure basis, but also investment in warehouses, not only on the Bangladesh side, but also on the Indian side. And uh, the particularly the four protocol routes that he had mentioned is very interesting. Uh, we need to not only have the routes, but uh, have it implemented and make sure that we can use these routes. And once these are successful, of course, we can then move into uh, the other uh, extra protocol routes. Lastly, uh, the line of credit given by India Many of these line of credits are uh, to do with these uh, 
connectivity issues like the Akhaura railway, some river dredgings, a lot of expenses are there, which are in fact trying to do exactly what you are suggesting. So, inshallah, uh, we look forward to have more interaction with Dhaka Chamber. And I do believe Dhaka Chamber can lead delegations to Northeast to showcase the opportunities between the two nations. Thank you. Next. Thank speaker, you very please. much, sir. Thank you. So, thank you to all the panelists and thank you to Abdul Matlub Ahmed Chab. Uh, sir, I, we will be, we are record, we have recording these sessions and so we will be uh, documenting a recommendation report from this uh, discussions which have been happening uh, so every day. So, and the, after that, we'll deliver it to the uh, relevant and respective departments and ministries of the, both the countries. So, that is uh, what uh, is on our plan of action. So, now we come to the conclusion of this uh, uh, potential cross-border surface route trade uh, session today. I'd like to inform to you that at four o'clock we are having the honourable uh, education uh, economic advisor to the honourable Prime Minister of Bangladesh, uh, Dr. Masur Rahman sir, and the honourable Minister of Commerce and Industry, Mr. Pius Goel sir, will be addressing at the uh, inaugural of this uh, virtual India Bangladesh stakeholders meet at four o'clock. So I'd request all the dignitaries and the delegates to kindly join at that session. It will be a very significant session from uh, the senior most uh, personalities from both the countries, responsible personalities from, from both the current countries are joining. So kindly, I request all to kindly log into that session. So I now thank uh, 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 Abdul Matlub Ahmed Sahib, President of India Bangladesh Chamber of Commerce and Industry for initiating the discussions. I would also like to thank Dr. Rajan Sudhansh Ratna, Deputy Head Sub-Regional Office for South and Southeast Asia of UNESCO uh, for his presence. I'd like to thank Madam R. Lalrondige, Advisor BIT Northeastern Council, Ministry of Donor Government of India. I'd like to thank Eastern High Commissioner of Bangladesh in Guwahati, Dr. Shah Muhammad Tanvir Mansoor. And uh, finally, I'd like to thank Sri Arman Haq Sahab, Acting President, Dhaka Chamber of Commerce and Industry, for your enlightening delivery. Thank you all for being here. So we now come to the conclusion of this uh, session. I would request again to kindly log in at 3.45. From 4 o'clock, we have the session with the Honorable Minister of Commerce and Industry, Government of India. An honorable economic advisor to the Prime Minister of Bangladesh. So, uh, thank you all. We would be expecting yeah. you to log in at our next session. Thank you.